Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Patz. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the New England Baptist Hospital. I specialize in sports medicine and surgery of the shoulder and knee. Today we're going to talk about common running injuries, their prevention and treatment. Runners uh, get great benefit from uh, running in terms of uh, health benefits, cardiovascular uh, benefit, and runners, uh, in my experience and treating them in my practice, also often love running and they get a, a feeling of well-being from that activity. And when an injury causes them not to be able to pursue that activity, it's very frustrating for them. Uh, so in general, uh, information to avoid injuries, uh, we like for people to gradually increase their mileage when they're starting a running program. Flexibility and strength training is, is very important. Cross-training is very important, and important for two reasons, I think. One is that when you cross-train, uh, you're using and training different muscles. Uh, but the other reason is when you're cross-training, you're not running on that particular day, so it tends, to obviously, to decrease your mileage. Appropriate shoes are very important. I think that people that are going to do any significant running should tend to uh, go to a, a running shoe store and, and get fitted appropriately. Uh, common sense is the most important thing. Again, if you're having significant discomfort, uh, you want to uh, back off your activity. Uh, also, if you are uh, starting to run, you want to increase your mileage in a uh, slow, gradual, common sense way. The rule of twos, uh, training factors that lead to injuries. People train too often, too hard, too much, and too soon. These are all factors that can lead uh, to injury. And again, it goes back to uh, common sense when you're, when you're picking up an activity or continuing an activity. And furthermore, in the rule of twos, when, when Things that lead to a prolonged recovery include seeking including seeking treatment. People seek it too late and it's too little. And uh, that often leads to a prolonged recovery and a longer time away from the running activity. And so again, we're going to talk about a number of conditions today. There's a whole plethora of conditions that uh, runners get. And I, I thought we would touch on uh, uh, six of the uh, more common ones. And they include shin splints, stress fractures, tibial stress fractures, Iliotibial band fr friction syndrome, otherwise known as lateral uh, knee pain, lateral runner's knee, uh, runner's knee, or patellofemoral pain and plantar fasciitis. So, what are shin splints? Uh, it's in medical terms, it's really a tendonitis, which is an inflammation of the tendon, or periostitis, which is an inflammation of the bone where the tendon attaches on the inside of the leg, and it can be caused by overuse, uh, e increased running, uh, mileage, or biomechanical issues. Uh, so what are biomechanical issues? We'll touch on this a little bit. Uh, the, uh, the foot in runners sometimes, and some people are pronated, and that can cause uh, a little bit of uh, extra stress on the inside of the tibia. Um, the other important thing about shin splints is that sometimes it can be confused with a stress fracture. And as a physician treating people with these kind of injuries, it's very important that we differentiate a stress fracture from shin splints because all the sy although the symptoms can be similar, the treatment is different. Um, again, pain on the inside of the leg with shin splints, uh, and the shin is often tender when we examine it. Treatment for shin splints, relative rest, decreased running, physical therapy, stretching, um, and then again, we mentioned the, the feet and uh, what, what's called pronation, which is, in simple terms, is when the foot is a little more flat than normal, and again, this causes some increased stress at the level of the inside of the tibia. Um, so when, you, when one has shin splints and is going back to running, we want to really assess this. We want to make sure people have the appropriate shoes for the type of foot they have, and then sometimes orthotics are necessary. And then what are stress fractures? Well, stress fractures are a tiny crack in the bone. Um, they're usually due to overuse. Uh, it's due to the repetitive stress to the bone with, with fatigued muscle. That, that's what leads to a stress fracture. And interestingly, sometimes you can't see them on x-ray. And it, going back... Uh, to runners, running is, a, is an interesting activity and different than some other sports in that it, it requires thousands of repetitive uh, motions that st can stress an area of the body, whereas if you, if you didn't have those thousands of um, repetitive uh, motions, perhaps that body would not, perhaps that part of the body would not uh, suffer an injury. So again, stress fractures, pain with activity that sub subsides with rest. Sometimes you can see it on x-ray, but other times you need an MRI or a bone scan. And it can occur in many different areas. The most common area that we see is really in the tibia, and that's the area that can get confused with shin splints, but they can occur up in the hip, the femur, the, uh, as well as the foot. Now we're going to speak uh, specifically on tibial stress fractures. 
the definition is it's a subtle fracture of the tibia that may not appear on a regular x-ray. It can be associated with increased mileage and biomechanical issues such as overpronation. It is important to differentiate a stress fracture from shin splints. And the way we do that often is shin splints often have an area on the tibia that's tender that's a little bit longer, whereas a stress fracture may have a very small focal area of tenderness. Again, people with stress fractures get pain with running. Uh, the location of the pain may vary, but it often presents on the inside of the tibia. Uh, people may need a special test like an MRI or bone scan to diagnose. Uh, the area of tenderness, like I mentioned, is often more discreet than with shin splints. And here's a typical patient that presented with uh, leg pain during running. And if you look on the x-rays on the left, I'll, t I'll tell you that those are uh, normal. And so we got a bone scan, and you can see the dark uh, black area is, is the sign of a stress fracture. How do we treat this? Well, we have people stop running initially, and sometimes, just by stopping running, people have no pain. Uh, but occasionally, uh, even with uh, the cessation of running, uh, the pain persists, and then we suggest that people either utilize crutches and sometimes casting or bracing. Uh, very occasionally this requires surgery, but usually it's either a uh, cessation of running or immobilization. Uh, when symptoms are resolved from a stress fracture, again, you want to consider physical therapy, you want to really closely evaluate your shoes, consideration of orthotics, and a modified uh, training regimen. Uh, in the in young women, we want to consider something called the female athlete triad. And that's a condition where, uh, on occasion, uh, younger women will uh, can overtrain, um, and sometimes uh, they're dieting, and they can get a triad, which includes osteoporosis, amenorrhea, which is the lack of a menstrual period, as well as anorexia. And those three things combined have uh, hormonal effects that can be very detrimental. And so when we see a young woman who, who is a runner, who has a stress fracture, uh, we want to think about this, and, then, and sometimes in that situation, we'll refer them for uh, further evaluation, either with their pediatrician or with their primary care doctor. Um, so now again, we're going to talk about specific conditions um, of the knee. Uh, the first one is called lateral runner's knee, or iliotibial band friction syndrome. And what is this? This is an inflammation of the iliotibial band, which is really a tendon on the outside of the knee. And you can see on the, uh, the schematic here where that pain would be located. It's right down towards the knee on the outside. Um, it is the most common cause of lateral knee pain in long distance runners. And what it's, it's caused by friction between that tendon, which we call the ITB, and the lateral femoral condyle. So you'll hear, you'll hear a number of different names for this. Some people will call it lateral runner's knee. Some people will call it iliotibial band friction syndrome. Some people will call it iliotibial band tendonitis. But they're all basically the same thing. Uh, in terms of symptoms for lateral runner's knee, lateral knee pain, what lateral means on the outside, which usually begins during running, it's often worse with downhill running. And again, pronation that we've talked about uh, can be a contributing factor. The treatment, obviously, is to decrease or stop running, especially downhill, shoe modification or orthotics, therapy, stretching of the iliotibial band, sometimes anti-inflammatory medication can be helpful, and occasionally a cortisone injection directly into the area can be helpful as well. Surgical treatment is not common, but you, well, occasionally what we'll do is we'll uh, make an incision over the uh, tender area, and we can clean out the area, clean out the inflammation, and hopefully that will uh, alleviate uh, some of these symptoms, but again, not very common. Then we'll, there's what we call runner's knee, uh, and the medical name for this is patellofemoral pain. It happens in runners and non-runners, but it does happen frequently in runners. Um, it's pain in the front of the knee, and its anatomic location is behind the kneecap in an area that we call the patellofemoral joint. Uh, the, again, the pain is located in the front of the knee. It's related to anatomic and training factors. It's uh, worse with running, especially inclines and declines, and even stairs when not running can be difficult. Again, this is the area on the schematic where the uh, patellofemoral pain occurs. You can see the patella, which is uh, colored red here. Uh, behind that is the femur, and there's the joint between those two bones is the source of this discomfort. And there's a tremendous amount of pressure that occurs between those two areas uh, that uh, is exacerbated uh, by uh, weakness of the quadriceps as well as tightness of the hamstring. So in terms of the treatment, what we really want to do is we want to strengthen the quadriceps and we want to increase hamstring flexibility. Both of those things, the 
uh, looser hamstrings and the stronger quadriceps will lead to diminished symptoms from this condition. Cross-training obviously can be very helpful, decreased mileage. Evaluation of the shoes is always something that we want to do in runners that are having uh, any type of uh, condition. Occasional surgical treatment is needed for this condition, but not usually. Uh, finally, down uh, towards the foot, uh, plantar fasciitis or, or painful heel syndrome. Uh, this is an inflammation or degeneration of the plantar fascia, which is a, a tendon located in the heel. It's common in runners and non-runners. Uh, the symptoms include uh, pain on the inside bottom of the heel, which is worse in the morning, uh, and also with running. The reason why it's worse in the morning is because when you sleep at night, your toes point down a little bit, and that allows for that tend to, tendon to contract as well as to tighten up at night. And when you go to walk in the morning, by just the nature of walking, your ankle has to move up and it stretches that tendon, and that's why people have pain. But then as the morning goes on, it stretches out and tends to feel a little bit better. Uh, this can develop with increasing mileage. The pain can be quite debilitating, and symptoms can be uh, quite prolonged. In terms of treatment, um, stopping or decreasing uh, the mileage that you're doing, uh, Achilles and plantar fascial stretching. So anytime you have an issue with a tendon, oftentimes stretching of that tendon is going to be very helpful. Formal physical therapy can be helpful. Um, Night splints or casting can be helpful, and the, the reason for the night splints is it stretches that plantar fascia at night. Um, orthotics can be helpful. Sometimes cortisone injection uh, can uh, speed the recovery of this. Surgical treatment is a last resort. Uh, we can release, believe it or not, or debride a portion of the uh, plantar fascia. Sometimes there's a bone spur associated with this. Um, and there's a, a, a type of therapy where shockwave therapy is done to the plantar fascia to decrease the symptoms. So again, the take-home message, if you're a runner, uh, enjoy it. It's a, it's a great activity. It has great cardiovascular benefit, um, but do it smartly. Uh, gradually increase your mileage. Uh, be very cognizant of flexibility and strength training. Cross-training is very appropriate. Make sure you have good equipment. You want to have good shoes. You want to use common sense. Thank you very much.